we are going to talk about multiplicity, zeros, and in behavior. So let's start with in behavior. So when we are looking at polynomials, so polynomials function, functions are anything that has um, an x value in there. So we could start with linear y equals x or f of x equals x. Let's go ahead and switch that over to f of x equals x. So that's linear. Then we have f of x equals x squared. Then we have f of x equals x cubed. And then so on. So we could say f of x equals x to the whatever value. So let's say in value. So these are polynomials. So we want to look at the n's behavior. So whenever I'm talking about n behavior, thinking about a graph, and we want to look at how does the left go and how does the right go. So when we talk about linear, this one is as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity. This is going down. It falls down. And then if we look at the right side, as x goes to infinity, the y goes to positive infinity also. We could look at all the different other types. So we can talk about the leading coefficient test, okay? So our leading coefficient is the number that is with the largest exponent. And we want to look at what the exponent is and also what that leading coefficient is, if it's positive or negative. So let's just take linear, for example. So f of x equals x. The exponent of our leading coefficient is odd. So this is odd. And we have a sub n, which is our leading coefficient right here, is greater than 0. So it is positive. So if we just take a real simple example like linear, this is what it's going to look like. Its in behavior is going to be, on the left side, it's going to negative infinity. And on the right side, it's going to positive infinity. Then if we look at a negative example, this would be like negative f of x, or f of x equals negative x, which is still an odd exponent. If it is a negative leading coefficient, then it will be going the opposite way. So to the left side, it's going to infinity, and on the right side, it's going to negative infinity. So real quick, if I were to erase just part of that, I want to keep the other part. I want to keep that. Because sometimes I have graphs that have a lot of things going on in the middle. So if you think of like x to the third, it goes like this, right? So it is still going on the left side going to negative infinity, on the right side going to positive infinity. So it doesn't matter what's going on in this middle. All we care about is how the ends are going. So this would be going down, and this would be going up. And then I can look at this one, too. So this is going like this. There's something else going on, but if we're going to the left, it's going to positive infinity, and right is going to negative infinity. So this is our end behavior. So then if I look at when the exponent is even, so we'll take a real easy example like quadratic, our exponent is 2, so it's an even exponent. Leading coefficient, and this is if it's positive. So we can take a real easy example like this. Then as it goes to the left, it goes to positive infinity, and right is positive infinity. Then the other one, if the leading coefficient is negative, it's less than 0 then it's going the opposite way. 
So for even, um, it goes the same direction. So if it's going either up or it's going down. So it's either going up to positive infinity, left and right side, or going down negative infinity on left and right side. So just like I did the other one, I'm going to erase that so that we just have part of it. So it's like this and like this. And this one's like this and like this. So there's something else going on in between the two arrows. It just depends on what that exponent is. So like a x to the fourth, it's going to be like this, right? So there's something else going on, but what do we care about? Just the ends. How does it end? How does it go on the left and how does it go on to the right? So these, if it's positive, it's going up to infinity on both. If your leading coefficient is negative, it's going down to negative infinity on both. And the phrase that we are going to have for in behavior is, I'm going to write it down here. Left side, left in behavior is going to be as x approaches negative infinity, comma, f of x does something else. It's going to approach either positive or negative. And then your right in behavior on the right side, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x does something. It either goes to positive or negative infinity. I'm going to erase this little line. It seems I'm going to change that real quick. So that is our phrase for the end behavior. All right, so let's go ahead and do this now. All right, so what we look at is we look at the leading coefficient, which is the value of the term that has the greatest exponent. So it's three, so we have an odd function. And so we need to also look at, is this positive or negative? And it is negative, so it's going to be this one right here. So the left side is going to go up, the right side is going to go down. So we're going to say for the left, as x approaches negative infinity, that means it's going left, 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 then f of x is going to go to positive infinity because it's going up, right? Up. So this is positive infinity. And then the right side is going to be as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. So I could say here, the right side is going to negative infinity. So the first part, the as x approaches, is going to be the same for, the, for every left, no matter if it's even or odd. Where it's going to have the change is going to be the f of x. So we could also say this, uh, say um, as you go to the left, it's going to go up to infinity. And as it goes to the right, it's going to go down to infinity. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is another odd function. But the leading coefficient is positive. So we're going to be looking at this. So if it's positive, that means it's going to end positive. It's going to be like this. So for the left side, we're going to say as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. because this is going down. So we're going to come back over here. If it's going down, it's going to negative infinity. And then if it's going right, it's going up to infinity. Okay, so now the right side. As x approaches positive infinity, it's going to the right. It's going to go up. So f of x approaches positive infinity. Okay, let's look at the next one. This is an even function, and it's positive. It's 
positive one. So it's going to look like this one right here. So as, so I'm gonna just write L this time, L for left. As X approaches negative infinity, F of X approaches negative infinity. No, positive infinity, sorry, it's going to the right. It's going up, it's going right and up. So it's positive infinity. And on the right side, as X approaches positive infinity, so it's going to the right, it's going to approach, the Y value is gonna approach positive infinity. F of X approaches positive infinity. These will be the same whenever it's even. These will be different when it's odd. So even functions in the same way as they start. It has the same end behavior. So you can write that up here, same. And then over here, it'll be different. Odd is different. Okay, let's go to the last one. This is an even function. So it also has a negative. So that is this one right here. So it's going to end like this. Oh, this one should have been like this. All right, so left side. As x approaches negative infinity, it's going to the left. f of x is going to go down to negative infinity. So this is negative infinity. And then our right side. As x approaches positive infinity, it's going to the right. f of x is going to still approach negative infinity because it's going down. So that is our end behavior. Okay, so let's go to the next page. Repeating zeros. So we're gonna talk about zeros and multiplicity. Okay, so zeros is how many times it crosses the x-axis. So a zero is an x-intercept. Multiplicity is how many times does it cross? So to figure out how many zeros, you are going to um, look at what the largest exponent is. So how many zeros? You're going to look at that f of x equals a sub n x sub n, and it's gonna be n zeros. So if I have an exponent of five, it's gonna be five zeros. If I have an exponent of 10, it's gonna be 10 zeros. That doesn't mean it's gonna cross 10 times. That means that we have up to 10 times that it can cross because we could have some repeated zeros. So we're gonna talk about repeated zeros too. So repeated zeros is x minus a raised to a k yields a repeated zero. x equals a of multiplicity k. So if k is odd, then the graph touches it at that point. So it's just going to go through. So if we think about this, it's going to go through. Okay. If it's even, then it's going to touch and turn. So it touches. So I'm going to say touch and turn. So that's a turning point which for quadratics, that's called this vertex. So at this point, it's called a double zero. This is a single, this is a double. All right, so let's find all the zeros and determine the multiplicity. So right now, we need to know that we have two zeros. So we need to find them. So we've been doing this a lot. We've been factoring and solving. So x squared minus 25 equals zero. Well, I can factor that x minus 5, x plus 5 equals 0. So see how this is 1 and this is a 1? So they each have a multiplicity of 1, which when we add those together, we should get 2. So if I do x minus 5 equals 0, x plus 5 equals 0, x equals 5, 
and try that again. X equals five. And it has a multiplicity of one, it's called a single. And then this one is X equals negative five, it is also a single. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, looks like I can factor out a T on this. So that's what I'm gonna do first. T, T squared minus four T plus four equals zero. So I do need to go ahead and factor um, the, the trinomial. So this is x, what multiplies to get 4, and adds to get negative 4. Have to be negative 2 and negative 2. So x minus 2, um, or t minus 2, equals 0. Or we can write this as t minus 2 squared. So t equals 0, and that is a single. And then t minus 2 equals 0, which is t equals 2. That is a double. So that is going to be a turning point for our graph. It's going to touch and turn. Okay. This one says find all real zeros and their multiplicity. Okay, we're going to uh, change this real quick. I'm going to change this to 4. Then I'm going to factor. I'm going to factor out a negative 2x squared, and then that leaves a 2x squared minus 1 equals 0. So negative 2x squared equals 0. So this is going to be multiplicity of 2. Go ahead negative 2, take the square root, x equals 0, and it's a double because of that. So it's going to touch and turn right there. Okay, and then we have this other one. So x equals plus minus square root of half, which we really don't want that. Um, so it's going to be 1 over square root of 2, because square root of 1 is 1. Well, I, I really need to rationalize that denominator. So x equals plus minus square root of 2 over 2. And which this actually means we have x equals square root of 2 over 2 and x equals negative square root of 2 over 2. So each of these is going to be a single. The whole thing was we have, we t we had two that came out of here, but they're each one time because one's a positive, one's a negative. So if you were to look back, so there's going to be four zeros, right? We have two here, and then we have one here and one here. So two plus one plus one equals the four zeros. Okay, let's go to example eight. We can factor out an x there x squared minus x minus 2. Okay, what um, equals 0? What multiplies to get negative 2 and adds to get negative 1? It would be 2 and 1. We'd want the negative to be the 2. So this is x and then x minus 2. x plus 1 equals 0. Now find each of the zeros. x equals 0 x minus 2 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0. So we already got this one. This one is positive 2. This one is negative 1. So we actually have 1, 2, 3 zeros. They all have a single multiplicity, which leading coefficient, largest exponent is 3. So we have three zeros. So these are all single. Single, single, single which makes it three total zeros. Okay, our last example. Let's go ahead and factor out an x. Okay, 
So what multiplies to get negative 6 and adds to get 1? 3 and 2. 3 and negative 2. This is x. x plus 3. x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals 0. x plus 3 equals 0. So x equals negative 3. And then x minus 2 equals 0. x equals 2. So we're supposed to have three, and so we have all of these are, again, singles. Okay, that is it for our notes for today.